I think that film inspires design because Hollywood's always driven kind of the image that we have of glamour, of family, and for me, Art Deco and, and kind of that beginning of modernism with uh, a lot of richness is something that I've always looked to, to draw inspiration. We chose Dinner at Eight, which was released in 1933. It was a film made really at the height of the Depression. And I think the glamour that you see in a lot of big Hollywood films at that time, they were releases, they were like panaceas in a time when people were struggling. Jean Harlow in this movie makes such great fun of herself. And the character of Kitty, is one of the most hilarious and perfectly acted characters and so we thought that bringing her to life would be kind of representative of people in New York that we knew. On the other hand, the Jacobs, which are, you know, kind of the Astors of their time, are this very affluent family. One of the reasons this apartment really is reflective of town and country, it's a very glamorous space, no question about it, uh, but it's also a very eclectic space. It reflects modern life, it reflects traditionalism, it reflects the sense of a specific personality having fun with those ideas and making them his or her own. Upon entering this apartment, which is beautifully designed by Gwathmi Siegel, it has this beautiful curving wall, which we took advantage of by having a scenic wallpaper. This beautifully handcrafted, half hand painted and embroidered wallpaper by Frommenthal allows you to walk into an art piece. I think the living room is the one room in this townhouse that feels very period, very all of a piece. The beautiful console that Richard created with painting and the Robert Kuo coffee table with the curves, it's all very refined. And then the wall painting is so strong. You know, there's a period reference, and yet you know you're in a modern space. The Ralph Lauren paint and the decorative work of Alpha Workshops runs right across these closet doors and across the door to the powder room, which gives the room a very unified uh, feeling and plays down these uh, sort of intrusions into the architecture of the space. The furniture here is all designed in the Richard Michon collection. The low forms of the chairs make the ceilings even higher and give the room a lot of comfort. I love that powder room. I think there's a sense of a nighttime space, a refuge from entertaining when you're going to reapply your lipstick. You've got this dark, enveloping, intimate space with these glimmers that come from the embroidery and the wallpaper and the Kohler fittings, which really shine on the vanity and the sink. We're playing off this high-low concept, and this particular cabinet is great design for very little money. So Kohler really came through with a very graphic and bold modern vanity with these very Art Deco fittings. And then the floor, which is gorgeous Nemo tile. So it's just a fantastic uh, combination. I'm not uh, particularly not fond of open plans, but they do create challenges in one's life. If you're having a dinner party and somebody's washing dishes or running, the water, the sound of it is distracting. And so we were thinking, how can we have the best of both worlds? So we created a dining room simply by putting some screens that you can actually fold away when you have your family or fewer people and you're in a more intimate setting. Then you could put the screens back and you're creating privacy and kind of a sound barrier. So that's what we've done, separating in the back the rooms into a library and a dining room and a kitchen. I love this dining room. I love the color and the drama and the darkness of it. There's so much mood and theater created there, which does sort of evoke that cinematic um, effect. Again, we bought these very inexpensive screens and then Jim Thompson was kind enough to give us this fantastic paper by Tony Duquette. It's paperback fabric. What we did is we cut out the triangles, inset them, and made, elevated these otherwise inexpensive screens to it, their glory. And actually they create this uh, very interesting and truly Tony Duquette background. 
Everybody who walks through this space is amazed at the beauty of this chandelier by Baker. What I love about it is the hand-painted little florals and the little crystals. In essence, you feel a real artist's hand. One of the things that makes this room so successful, I think, is the floral design, which was done by L'Olivier here in Manhattan. Uh, you played up the colors, you have shells and eggs and artichokes right in the floral containers, and he picks up on the paintings that are on the wall in a really uh, fun way. I think to me this library is very warm. You could spend a lot of time here. But the best quality I think it's got going for it is flexibility. Uh, it's got movable seating that you could also use to put a tray on with a cup of tea. It's got a desk tucked in the corner. There's a sofa so you can relax. There's a TV, but the TV is sort of tucked away on a wall. It doesn't become the primary focus of the room. Karistan has uh, beautiful carpets that we use throughout the apartment. They're all animal prints. Animal prints to me are just neutrals. They're just like a beige carpet or black or white or something. The more pattern you put in, as long as, again, as long as all patterns are, are equally strong, it all kind of comes together. So the bedroom seemed like a really logical place for us to spend a lot of attention because in the movie, Kitty, the Jean Harlow character, is in bed constantly. Kitty's room is an explosion of all things kitschy and wonderful. The Alpha Studios again painted these beautiful diamond-shaped patterns with Ralph Lauren paint. And what I think the effect is, is that the lighter color in the background and, and the metal uh, in the foreground gave it a depth and it gave the room actually a larger sense of what it is. Again, your eye travels around the room, making the room much larger. Scandia extraordinary makers of fine, fine linens. They embroidered this for us. They can embroider it in colors. I particularly love white linens because it punches up and makes the room just fresh and clean. I don't think the room needed more color. This is a collection of Kitty's collectibles. What Kitty collected were people. And so we're kind of laughing at her, but celebrating her kookiness. In having this collection of photographs, we picked three frames. This seems to make things look more collected and that they were collected over time, as opposed to having this sense of new money, which everything's bought in one day and put up. In the same way that Kitty doesn't like a shy bedroom, she doesn't like shy clothes either. And I think we wanted to play up her uh, dramatic self-confidence and her interest in theater in the clothes. We styled it with wonderful silver rolling racks from Urban Archaeology, which is a fantastic retailer in uh, Tribeca, not far from here. And then we went to Eli Tahari for the clothes and accessories. I think the secret now to spending is to buy things of great quality or things that are really representative of, of what you want, but not a lot of it, which I think in the past, pre-recession, excess was not only what you were spending, but the amount of things you were spending. So it's kind of like this cutting back is refreshing. It's, it's nicely edited and it's very tight and more cohesive. I think decoration should be fun. It can be a place of fantasy and a place of escape, and it can also really feed your soul in a way. And I think that feeding your soul with something a little more colorful and uplifting is really important.